Today let's paint something epic. A Scottish warrior brandishing a sword in a majestic Scottish landscape. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to continue the series that we've started in my last demo with the Pre-Raphaelite inspired small scale painting of a Scottish couple inspired by a photograph done by Christy Ashton. As I've told you in my previous video and if you haven't seen it I will link it down below so please check it out, it might be of interest to you. I would like to use three of Christy Ashton's photograph as a base for a small series of oil paintings combining both the beauty of the Scottish Highlands landscape and um, some very, I would say, maybe outlander or folklore inspired um, characters within these epic scenes. So we had the very romantic embrace in my last video and today what I would like to do is concentrate on the very typical character that is the Jacobite warrior, a very current motif that we encounter in the 18th century paintings, a brave warrior that is going off to battle in the Jacobite revolution. Of course this is such an important historical period in Scotland that had very grave consequences for Scotland in the hall, there were clearances, Gaelic was banned, uh, they weren't allowed to wear their clan tartans anymore, um, economic difficulties, so many were to emigrate from Scotland and leave their homeland forever. So it, it feels only natural that both politically engaged and also romanticized paintings from that period were to appear during the Jacobite Rebellion but also afterwards. So I would like my painting today be a continuity of this type of painting and in order to do so we already have an absolutely spectacular basis in the form of Christy Ashton's photograph that she took of Stephen Wardlow. I've already linked both of their accounts and Christie's website in my previous video uh, but I will just relink everything in case you haven't seen it yet or you haven't watched my last video. I will also include the photograph within the video so you can see what I'm talking about. Now as to the difficulties that we might have with this photograph or with the translation of this photograph into a painting um, is of course the double challenge of a landscape painting and a portrait painting within one format because we have a decent amount of landscape here and it is rather more present than in the last painting that I did that was inspired by Christie's photo and we also have less space to realistically paint the figure within the landscape. It will be an even bigger challenge to represent the details realistically and to go into details. What is very apparent in the photograph is the difference in the details between the background obviously and the foreground. So we have quite a lot of detail in the rock structure in the foreground as well as the grasses and we lose it of course progressively with the view of Glencoe and then the hills that are even further away on the horizon. I'm not sure that we necessarily have to do it in this way or to make the difference that blatant within the painting. Um, I don't know whether you paid attention to that but if you looked at classical and like old masters painting there never is such a huge difference or very rarely so between the foreground and the background to the point that you can see every single detail of a rock in the foreground and then only forms made of color without no contour in the background because this is the difference between photography and painting obviously right or painting from life when you are taking a photograph you obviously always have a certain focal length and a certain focus point so everything cannot naturally be in focus except if you focus stack and merge everything together but this for instance is not the case in this particular photograph and this is the biggest difference to the human eye because we can adapt our focus, our internal focus let's say, 
nearly in the same way to things that we see in the foreground as details that are further away. I'm not saying that this is the exact de same degree, but in a way we don't perceive the difference. Like if we are looking in, into the distance, our brain does not, does not register that everything in the foreground is automatically blurred. The, the brain just blends it out somehow. So you never perceive at the same time consciously like something very blurry and something very, uh, very detailed and very sharp. So I think that the right way here for the painting would be to have some level of difference in the sharpness in the foreground and background, but not to the same extent maybe as we have in this photograph. Because you can clearly see that the rock uh, in the right bottom corner is already out of focus as well, because the focus is on Stephen and the middle ground of the rock where, where he's standing. So you have blurry, sharp, blurry and even more so. This is not the construction that I would want to have for the painting. In order to make it more smooth, uh, we are going to even this focus contrast a little in the painting. So this would be, I think, um, an important challenge here. Well, I do think that painting the rock realistically will be quite a challenge on this small scale. Because, as I've told you, we are not going to go that much into the detail of every porosity of the rock. I think, honestly, I'm not sure that I will have technically the capacity of doing so with my, with my brushes on this small of a scale. Concerning the background, we are having quite a palette of similar but still sufficiently different colors, so we have maybe one, two, three, four different tonalities of an oak and burnt sienna maybe, greens mixed into it, so it will be interesting mixing all those colors as realistically as possible and having a, a big variety of those similar yet different colors together to sculpt this landscape within the painting and giving it a really 3D impression. I think I'm done enumerating the difficulties and things to look out for within this painting, so let's get started.
you go guys! I hope you like the end result. On the whole I'm quite pleased how this turned out and I think I did identify the challenges beforehand correctly because this is exactly what I struggled most with. First of all the balance in the level of details in the foreground and in the background because somewhere down the road I had the feeling that especially the contrast within the browns did bring too much of a structure and maybe too much of details into the background so you maybe noticed me going over with a stiffer brush in order to muddle the colors a little bit together and in order to smooth out the border between the different details so that you don't have a quite a harsh contour on the different details in the mountain that everything is a little bit more of a smooth surface as it would appear from afar. I think that I brought enough detail into the rocks in order to make them look believable but maybe not enough so I don't know I definitely hit the limit of what I'm capable of with the brushes that I have and on this small of a size. At the same time I'm thinking that it might have been maybe too distracting if we had so much more details in the foreground like the porosity of the rock as well as the different grasses so I actually concentrated my effort on the grasses in the foreground. I believe it is dried heather so I went over like a brownish purple at some point in order to establish this typical undertone of heather when it's already dried out in the autumn and lost some of it color but yet you still see that it's not just regular grass that is dried out and completely brown it is it still retains um, a little bit of its purplish undertone other than that for the landscape part of this painting everything else went pretty smoothly I decided to darken the sky a little bit to make it more dramatic. I wanted to have something even moodier. As to the sky, what really helped me with the drama as well is the contrast between the blue-grey and, and its cold undertones and the warm grey that I used in the more illuminated part of the clouds, maybe those who caught the sunlight a little more and retained those warmer tones. I think that this contrast really works well in order to give the clouds volume as well as drama and tension. And as to the portrait part of this painting, uh, yeah, it is a small scale. Uh, it is definitely not easy to do for me. So I decided to not go that much into the detail of the draping but just retain the largest areas that we know in the draping the largest area like of shadow or the really bigger drapings that catch the light and make up the highlights um, on the shirt. In regard to the kilt, what was particularly difficult is not even only the tartan pattern on it and making it appear and look believable, but also the contrast between the areas that are completely in the shadow and those that are completely within the light and very much visible where you see all the details in the pattern. And um, in the photograph there are not many like transitional parts where the tartan shifts in and out of shadow. It is pretty much either it's completely in shadow and it's black or it is catching the light and appearing in bright side. And while this is very well believable and looks natural within a photograph these are not really conditions that I believe maybe look the best in a painting because you have to be either more detailed or in the pattern that you do have this photographic appearance or maybe have more transition. So this is the only part of the painting I'm not entirely sure about. I'm not sure how convincing this is but um, I painted over as you've seen like several times going back and forth bringing less and then more of the tartan out of the shadow and neither of, of these options looked really right in my eyes so I just decided on a version that while well, I was most satisfied with. I also feel like all the colors echo each other very well. You have the greens in the mountains in the kilt in the foreground. You have some sort of gray mixed in 
in the sky but also in the browns and obviously in the rocks so I feel like it's a very harmonious scene and while it has all the drama within the movement of the figure and uh, the figure being standing upright and brandishing the sword and you have this dramatic sky other than that it is very circular maybe because you have the mountains on both sides you have well the cooler and the darker parts in the clouds that are closing in so your attention is really drawn to to the middle that is going upwards and everything else um, like leading to it so yeah I feel like the eye can really circulate very harmoniously and endlessly within this painting so this is something that I like very much about um, the end result of it I hope you liked this little demo and as usually I would be very pleased to see you in my next video very soon. Until then, have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Bye guys! <laughs>